Welcome to Inside Out West. But first, homeless hostels should be a place of safety for some of the most vulnerable people in our society. Better than living on the streets, that's for sure. Well, that's what I thought, until I started looking into the secret world of homeless hostels. Like this place. What goes on behind closed doors at Wick House? It's an 87-bed homeless hostel in the Brislington area of Bristol, registered as a charity, and describes itself as offering a welcome environment to heal and recover. But I've been told it's far from that. I'd rather be on the street. I was better off on the street. It was that bad? It was that bad. And the family of a man who died there are desperately seeking answers. We knew he was alone and, and there was no one there to support him, but have never understood exactly what happened in those hours um, leading up to when he died. Is this just one example of a much wider problem? Who's checking that the provider is actually providing all these services and are the tenants getting a good deal from it and is the taxpayer getting a good deal? We ask what's being hidden in plain sight. George Mahoney died at Wick House in November 2016. The dad of two is described by his family as popular, likeable and a practical joker. He had problems with alcohol and when he hit rock bottom, he ended up at Wick House, hoping it would be a turning point in his life. What was he telling you about Wick House at the time? Um, he was very disappointed in the way that it was run. He saw a lot of vulnerable people. Um, alongside him in uh, living in Wick House. The conditions in his room were squalid and he, he did, for example, there was no lighting in, in the room that he was using. He would tell us um, facts about um, things that he saw, that, that, that money lending was going on. And I got the impression that there were a lot of unqualified staff and, and perhaps people who were inappropriate for a, a very difficult job. George was expecting a very different regime, a much more supportive regime, and something that would, um, would actually give him a springboard to try and um, overcome his problems and get out and get somewhere else. He died before he was able to make the kind of progress that he wanted to make. What was your last contact with him? Uh, it was the Sunday before he died on the Tuesday, and I told him that, um, well, I told him I left him and I didn't want to bury him. Um, to which he replied with a sexual swear word and told me that he'd bury me and I was an old man. Um, which was our last conversation before he died just a few days later. George was found by a member of staff in a pool of blood. He was pronounced dead at the scene and a post-mortem recorded the cause as sudden unexpected death in alcohol misuse. So what were you told afterwards? I mean, what, what happened? Very little. We could get no information from, from anyone. The sense of loss was made worse by the fact that we had enormous difficulty in finding out the factual background of what happened in those last hours. We knew he was alone and, and there was no one there to support him, but um, what the actual circumstances were, we still don't know. There was never an inquest into George's death, but there was a police investigation which found no suspicious circumstances. But what exactly happened to George on the night he died remains, to some extent, a mystery. To try and find out more, I've come to meet someone who used to work at Wick House and was alone on duty the night George died. Tell me about George and what happened. Uh, well, I, uh, I was in the office on my own. Everyone else had, had actually quite recently gone. Um, and uh, a chap came uh, to say, uh, George is bleeding. So went down to George's room. George's door was open. Um, the light wasn't on. Um, the light didn't work. The bulb was blown. And no, one, no one had fixed that. Um, I got my phone out to see what was going on in there. Um, and George was quite clearly uh, dead. And he was lying on his back on his bed, um, not moving, covered in blood, blood absolutely everywhere. 
because it was such a small room, we had to move his bed out into the corridor so that we could do CPR on the floor. So we did CPR until the ambulance came. You were on your own? I was on, yeah, I was on my own with it, yeah. And, and also, obviously, this sort of thing upsets everybody. So you've also got, a, there's a certain amount of management of the residents that you need to do as well. Incredibly frightening. Yeah, it wasn't. It was a. It was, yeah, I, I remember it. I mean, it didn't give me nightmares or anything, but but it's not something I'm going to forget. Phil left Wick House shortly after George died because of what happened. He says he was offered no support in the aftermath, not even a phone call to check if he was OK. What's your assessment of Wick House looking back at that time? I don't think it's the right thing. I think the people there are either very vulnerable and need more help than Wick House gives them, or they're not very vulnerable and they spend their time preying on people who are vulnerable. You know, there's quite a lot of bullying, there's quite a lot of arm twisting. People are broke all the time, so there's a lot of lending of money and then paying back and that sort of stuff. There's the, you know, it's, it's, it's not a wholesome environment and there's not much help for people. The, the help that is there, the support that is there tends to be office hours. I, I went there with the, with the intention of making it a better place and I've, it just isn't possible. The, 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 structurally, it doesn't work and it, you know, they don't see themselves as providing care. They see themselves as a house of multiple occupation. They don't see any need or any, you know, there's just, it's just not their role to support people, so they don't. So care is secondary? It, care is, is, is barely on the agenda. Wick House is an independent hostel run by a charity, Bristol Sheltered Accommodation and Support. We asked them for an interview, but they refused. In a statement, they told us staff are appropriately trained and supported, and there is a minimum of two night staff on duty. They added all staff must sign agreements requiring they do not lend money or accept gifts from residents. They also say they do not tolerate bullying or intimidation of residents. Homelessness in Bristol has hit a crisis point after the temporary closure of two emergency support centres in recent weeks. Beds are at a premium. And I've discovered Wick House has been expanding illegally. They've built an extension and halved the size of many of the rooms to double the number of tenants. They've since applied for planning permission, which has been rejected by Bristol City Council. Tenants pay £160 a week in housing benefit to stay there. So, what do they get for that? Well, here on the website, they say they provide support for addictions and mental health. But the charity told us they signpost residents to support services. And the council recently cut the amount of housing benefit tenants pay to the charity because they're not getting enough support. But disturbingly, I've been told the conditions haven't improved since George died. One man who lived there for a few months this summer also has alcohol dependency. I wasn't given any, any assistance on my drinking whatsoever. I was just told that I could carry on drinking as long as I just drank in my room. And that's your experience, that you can, you can often come out worse than you went in? Well, yeah, basically, I could have, I could have easily just stayed in my room all the time. They used that they would knock your door to see if you were still alive, but that would be about it. You know, I could just stay in my room all the time and just go out and just buy the drink or get somebody else to buy it for me, and just drink constantly all day, every day. I've also spoken to a number of people who have lived or worked there. Some of them have agreed to speak to me on the condition we protect their identity because they're afraid of speaking out. So I've lived there for several months and it's in the absolute pits. What's the living conditions like? We've heard stories of bed bugs and things like that. Yes, the, the bed bugs were rife. Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, the, the procedures for spraying the rooms wasn't done because no one gives a brass razoo what goes on there. I've had a, a history of addiction and of homelessness and mental health. I was early in recovery, you know, um, and I was able to get a job as a support worker there. I wasn't given much support. I wasn't given much, you know, I, I was given about 15 clients to look after. So, you know, I had quite a heavy workload for somebody that was very unqualified and in quite a vulnerable situation. So it broke you? It broke me, yeah. 
Wickhouse is licensed with Bristol City Council as an HMO, house in multiple occupation. The council inspected the hostel in August after a complaint about conditions and is due to inspect again in a few weeks, but says the hostel is safe. The charity admits there are bed bugs at Wick House, but says it's a problem in all hostels. I've also discovered the Charity Commission is investigating its finances, but they refuse to give me any details. So who is accountable? Richard Graham is the MP for Gloucester and co-chaired a national report looking into this and believes councils could be doing more. There are some indicators there that should flag up real concern for the local council. And there are two possible aspects to it. One is a straightforward commercial one, which is people just trying to maximise the yield they can get out of their property by shoving in more and more rooms and illegal extensions and all the rest of it. And that exists all over the UK. There are real problems on that. So that's one aspect to it. But the, the other aspect to it is the one that could involve criminal activity. So if there are allegations of drug dealing, manipulation of vulnerable tenants. That gives the council a real reason to go in and see what's happening and why. This is about human life and we do need to see some action fairly soon. The charity told us it categorically forbids drug dealing at Wick House and say they're very proud of the important service they offer in very challenging conditions. This just happens to be a, a, a very strange and dark um, hole in the in the structure of the uh, system that the, the people are just left to um, to flounder without real support.